Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you and Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed, and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. 
Uh, please join me in reciting uh, Psalm 25, verses 1 through 8. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. The second lesson is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, Regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was uh, in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our children are invited at this time to follow Miss Allison to the Cloister Courtyard for Children's Chapel.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. But he answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I can't remember if it was when I was in sixth or seventh grade but I can remember I was 12 when I broke the six foot tall mark. I was in one of those schools that had seventh through 12th grade together in one building and I was the tallest kid in the school in seventh grade. And at my maximum when I was playing football, I ended up being 6'9 and I weighed about 355 pounds at that time. Both my mother and my father's family both had tall men in the family tree and I guess I just got lucky and had the right mix of genes from both sides of the family. My father, I guess you would call him tall, he was 6'2 and about 200 pounds, but in most families when that would make him a tall person, with me and my younger brother who was 6'5", with both of us under his roof, my father was second to shortest in our family. And when I was a kid, especially in those years before I got my driver's license, it would happen frequently that I would go somewhere with my father and we would get the same question over and over again. We would be going to school in the morning and we would be in line at Super Junior, which was the gas station with good biscuits just a couple miles up the road from our house or we would be in the gym at the old downtown YMCA that's no longer there in my hometown, and someone would walk up to my father and look at us both and say, he's your son. And without fail, my father would say, yeah, he sure is. And then the inevitable comment about how much more taller and bigger I am than he was. And my father made the same joke every time. He would pretend to reach for his wallet and he'd say, hey, look, Jay was a really bad boy at school today and I'm going to have to punish him and I'm selling tickets. Do you want one? 
My father uh, has been gone, it'll be three years in the spring, and I'm all the more aware of how much of a kind and gentle and patient man he was, especially as a father. But I can remember one morning when my father made it very clear who was what in our relationship. I was moving slow one morning and my parents had been to my bedroom at least twice to tell me to get it in gear. And on the third or fourth stop by by my bedroom, my father came into the room fully dressed and ready to face the day. And he said, get moving, Jay Berg, you're gonna be late again. And I muttered under my breath, man, get out of my face. What did you just say, son? Nothing, I said back. But he and I both knew what I had said. No, 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 no. I want to hear it again, son. What did you just say to me? And I straightened up as tall as I could, and I stiffened up at my full height, and I turned and faced my father and said, I said, get out of my face. (laughs) In that instant, my father closed the gap between me and him so quickly it felt like he levitated over my bedroom carpet. And he stood there chest to chest with me. And though I was over a full head taller than him and I had about 175 pounds on him, He tucked his head right in under my chin and he reached up and put his finger in my face. Nobody likes that motion, by the way, right? And he said, you have it backwards, son. I am your father. I will get in your face. Do you hear me? It wasn't a question. I had the height, the strength, and the reach, but I was vested in that moment because he had the authority. And he stood there with his finger in my face, his eyes looking up at mine, locked into my eyes as I said, yes, sir. I thought about that long ago morning from my childhood in my childhood bedroom with my father when I read Matthew's gospel this morning. Jesus has entered into the temple complex and the chief priests and the elders, those who have the authority, they approach him with a very specific question. By what authority are you doing these things, Jesus? And the things that they are referring to are pretty large infractions in their mind. First, Jesus had made a big to-do of his coming into the city of Jerusalem. We read in the first chapters of the 21st 21st chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus' procession into the city, the day that we remember on Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week, if you remember. Surely it had not gone without drawing some attention when Jesus came into the city and people waved palm branches and put their cloaks on the road in front of him and cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Maybe something like this would have been allowed to have passed. It would have been strange, but nothing too egregious, perhaps. But then Jesus came into the temple and started turning over the money changers' tables and driving everyone outside of the temple, saying, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you are making it into a den of thieves. Now, in this reading today, Jesus has come again to the temple and entered it again. And those with authority want to know who gave him the authority to do these things that they have just seen him do. And Jesus answers their question with a question all of his own. This apparently was a common way that teachers would engage one another. He asks them about John the Baptist. Right? John the Baptist here in the chapel, the Holy Spirit chapel, baptizing our Lord. He asks him, is John's baptism from above or from below? And it's a good question, one that they don't have a suitable answer to. And then it's Jesus' turn to open with the question. 
and he tells them this parable the parable of two sons and the content it seems is pretty straightforward right which son do you think is better the content is there is a father who has two sons he approaches them and he doesn't ask them with the authority of a father he tells them to go out into the vineyard and work the first son simply refuses Matthew doesn't tell us any of the details of his refusal, only that this first son simply says, I will not. So this father goes to his second son, and it's the same deal. Go out into the vineyard and work today. And this son says, yes, sir. One son says no, the other says yes. But in this turn of events, the son who refused he changes his mind and goes out into the vineyard to do the day's work. And the second son, that one who so earnestly said, Sir, yes, sir, well, he never gets around to doing it. It's fun to imagine the details surrounding these two sons. What, what happened for both of them that made them change their intention, one for good and the other for ill? Was the first son repentant for arguing against his father? Did he feel guilty for not doing what his father asked him to do? Was the second son just too busy? One of those excuses that you and I are good at making. Or did he have a genuine emergency that needed seeing to? We simply don't know because Matthew doesn't tell us why. But I can tell you what we do know today. We live our entire lives in the tension between the response of these two brothers. Jesus teaches us that those in the temple that day, that those who have greeted him along the road into the city of Jerusalem, the poor, the sick, the weak, the impure, all of the things that we don't want to be that they have responded to the outpouring of authority present in Jesus, while those who claim to serve God have failed to see the authority of John the Baptist and all that is happening in their very midst. Each day, you and I are asked to respond to God the Father each day we are called to work in the vineyard and right here at the corner of Central and Greer there is fruit well within our reach that is ready to harvest. Did you notice what Jesus asked the scribes and the elders when he finished this parable? He asked them which of the two did the will of the Father? Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, then, is a matter of responding to the one with authority, obeying his command to love one another as he loves us. Faith in Matthew's gospel is about not simply doing good works because it's the ethical thing to do. Faith is obeying God who has made a covenant with his people. And faith is doing the work of harvesting in the vineyard. I am grateful to God because he has given us a particularly bountiful corner of his vineyard here in this parish and in this part of our city. Our faith in God, revealed in our Lord Jesus Christ, must both be a yes with our lips and then to doing the work that comes after. Our faith must be both a noun and a verb. If I have anything to do with it, my prayer for us is in the years ahead, we will grow in love of God and love of each other here. True, we have been using different tools in these past seven months than we have ever used before. 
But God's call for us to respond remains. And we will gladden each other's hearts and support each other as we grow and work together. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayers of the people, form two. I ask your prayer for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Phoebe Rofe, for this gathering, and for all the ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. Remembering those on our prayer, on our parish prayer list, Linda Banks, Leela Cantor, Francis Catmer, Young Tro Gillespie, James Gordon, Jenny Graham, John Paul Jones, Charlotte Hodges, Margaret Smith, Ann Spear, Chip Taylor, Dot Work, John Eyre, Salon Blackwell, Mary Ann Chandler, Scott Edge, Damon Graff, Rusty Hensley, Keith Hollins, Tom Horton, Evelyn Hudson, Henry Lewis, Michael Lombardo, Joyce Mays, Kathy Miller, Wells, Pam Willis. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all those who seek God, a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and we find found by him. I ask your prayers for those that have departed. Pray for those who have died 
especially remembering Linda Marks. Praise God, those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have gone grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace and good morning. It's good to see each of you who are who are here with us today, and welcome to those who are watching online as well. Uh, just a couple of announcements, things to be aware of. You'll see on the back of your order of worship there are a number of good things that are happening here. You'll see our worship schedule. We will we met this morning at 9:15 um, via Zoom for adult Christian formation. That means Sunday school. We we use words uh, unnecessarily. Sunday school was at was at 9:15, and you'll see. Um, a, a snapshot of what's ahead on Sunday mornings for Sunday school and also uh, our book club, which is a lot of fun on Wednesday night. Save the date. Next, um, next Sunday, October the 4th, there'll be a photo scavenger hunt for a family formation event. Um, we will celebrate Holy Eucharist, thanks be to God, and uh, one of the things that, that will, will be different until we are able to, to do this uh, more fully, following the sentence of administration, um, the gifts of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Um, the, the ushers are going to come forward, and we will continue to have um, distribute Holy Eucharist outside with, uh, with the post-communion prayer, the blessing, and the dismissal to follow from that space. So take your purse, take your, your, your Bible, anything that you have with you. Once we, we leave this space following that part of the Eucharist, we won't come back in. Um, if you would leave plenty of room and receive the, the Holy Sacrament wearing your mask, and once you get away from the, the, the priest, the distance, if you would consume that and then um, give each other plenty of room, we will have the post-communion prayer and the blessing and dismissal from there and, and go, um, go out into the world to be the church from that space. So uh, it's different. It's what we can do for now. And the most important thing is that we can share the body of our Lord, and uh, I'm willing to do that, whatever, whatever shape we have to, to hold that in right now. Otherwise, it's, it's great to see each of you here today. Let us present the offerings and oblations of our lives and labor to the Lord.
of service of the Holy Eucharist that continues with Eucharistic prayer B. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John, Constance and her companions, the martyrs of Memphis, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let's keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the bread of heaven the body of Christ 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 the bread of heaven body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven, body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a good day.